Welcome back. This is Mike from Digital Offensive, and you're watching my path to the OSCP. And today we're going to look at Topo uh, from Bone Hub. It's a very simplistic box and uh, definitely way below my skill set. But it's definitely still a good box uh, for several reasons. Uh, Design-wise, I think it was really well set up. And it gave you the opportunity uh, to try out a new, uh, not a new, but a uh, less seen escalation point uh, using escapes. So we'll go through all that in a moment. But first I want to give you guys a little background or a little update. I have been chasing Guru for a little bit now on Hack the Box. Uh, for those who don't know what Hack the Box is, definitely check out hackthebox.eu. You got to hack your way in to actually get into the system to even use in the first place. Uh, for those who are less skilled, you can run out and Google how to get into uh, the invite system and get into the, into Hack the Box. But it's not going to really help you by doing that because you need to have some knowledge to actually do anything within Hack, hack the Box. Uh, the, the machines range from uh, basic up to pretty advanced. So the one thing with Hack the Box is you get rated as you progress. The more boxes you hack, the more challenges you do, the more points you get. Um, the problem is, once a week, a machine or a challenge or something is retired. And when something is retired, you lose those points. So if you're not at the next level before that retirement happens, you lose the points and your progress to the next level. So for the longest amount of time, um, I took a break and I was like, oh, worst comes to worst, I reset to zero, no big deal wrong you can actually go negative points and by going negative points it makes it even harder to get to the next level so i've been chasing each week basically i've been racing the clock to try to get a box done to get to guru um twice now i've been really close within the 90 percent finally this week it happened i was able to knock out the top three uh smasher reddish and mischief and then i was able to focus on uh oz and giddy which um, by taking over Giddy, I was able to move myself into Guru. So now that I have hit Guru, uh, which was one of my goals, and being in the top 100, which is my other goal, as well as uh, the Hall of Fame, I have decided to probably step back now from Hack the Box and refocus now back on my OCP path. But as I said, the main purpose of this video is about Topo. And the reason I looked at Topo in the first place is one of my coworkers mentioned the box. He was looking at trying to do the tr try to do the boot to root. So I decided to download and install it last night, and within a few moments was able to own the box. So let's jump over to Topo, and we'll talk some uh, information about it. So when you install it, it's a v uh, VDMK image. So basically, you're going to do a new uh, image. You're going to select the existing hard disk, which is that image file. And it's going to boot up. The one cool thing I liked about Top though is it tells you the IP address on your network. We don't have to go searching for the IP like you have to do on many other boot to roots. So with that happening, I was able to quickly jump over to my Kali and start off my enumeration process right away. So we know it is sitting at uh, 1.220. So we're going to jump over to our Kali instance here. We're going to bring up a new terminal and we're going to do some uh, port enumeration, see what's out there. We're going to run some MMAP scripts against it and see what we're looking at attacking. So as this is running, you can already see that we have some ports out there. Uh, 111, RPC bind, 80, which is HTTP, uh, 22, and 38476. Take a quick peek at this. So we have some information about RPC bind we can dig at. Um, I know a lot of people like to rush right into RPC Bind. There's been known exploits published in the past for it. Um, it's not usually my first go-to. I like to enumerate everything before I make an assumption. We have uh, something running on port 80. It looks like some type of content management system. Uh, clean blog, start, bootstrap. Uh, we have our port 22 open. So that's probably where we're going to log in with the user or something to escalate our privileges. So let's take a look at the website. Okay. So we can see it's a simple blog page. It looks like it's HTML files. When we highlight over items, it says post HTML, sample post. Um, doesn't look like there's anywhere to log into, at least not right off the bat. Maybe there's a user or admin section we can look at. Um, we can always check the source code. 
see if there's anything hidden in here. We see there is some comments in the code. Scrolling through. Nothing really jumps out at me. Um, sometimes I check out the um, the JS files to see if they hit anything in there as well. In this uh, this capture the flag, they have not hit anything in there. So let's kick off some additional enumeration on port 80. So we'll do Nikto. We'll kick off Nikto, let Nikto run. As Nikto's running, we'll do a uh, Derby. Either Derby, Derbuster, GoBuster, um, whatever suits you. Um, I find the Derbuster medium list uh, is a little bit better for some capture the flags. It gives you some more, some additional items to be checked. Uh, the Derby big list is really good as well. Um, but I've been getting better results between GoBuster and Derbuster with that medium list. But for this competition, it's a very small box. So let's just do Derbuster. User slash share slash Derbuster. And we're gonna do common. We're gonna let this run. Now you can quickly see, we found an admin directory there. We found a bunch of other items, a mail directory, a manual directory vendor. And the manual directory it actually found is the Apache manual directory. So basically, it's going to go through every single manual of Apache. Um, over here on Nikto, Nikto completed. You can see there's an admin directory, image, mail, manual. So, so we saw our admin directories open. We can go to admin, click on notes, and it says note to myself. I need to change my password. Um, sad face or frowny face. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Ted, one, two, three is too outdated but the technology isn't my thing. I prefer to go fishing or watching soccer. So at first I was kind of thinking maybe this is the admin password to the blog, but there is no admin place to log in. The blog is HTML pages. So what can you really do? Um, then I remembered, hey, SSH is open on this box. What can we do with SSH? Well, we can definitely log in, try to go from there, enumerate further uh, on SSH, but what's the username that we need so I was looking at the blog. I didn't see anything on the blog for a username. Um, started poking around. And I started thinking about, hey, let me try some basic ones like root, um, admin just to try it out. Not that admin's a basic um, common name in Linux, but neither of them work either. Um, I was about to kick off Hydra to try to guess the username. But looking at the password, I decided, let me try Ted. If his password is that simple, uh, he's telling me that he doesn't care about technology or anything else. Maybe that's the username. So we come over here. I'm going to kill Derby. Uh, let's do SSH Ted at 192.168.1.220. Paste. And look at this. I'm logged in as Ted. So the first things I like to do when I jump on a box, that's a Linux box, I do a sudo dash L. Tells me there's no sudo command, which is kind of interesting, but no problem. It's a, a Debian box and reading over Debian's documentation, depending on how you did your install, De uh, the command sudo would not be there by default. Not an issue um, because how Debian handles it, if you have a sudo or a file, then you can basically just run the command. Um, we can download some tools. So you can see I downloaded Lint uh, Enum and Linux Probe Checker. Um, I usually keep them in my Kali uh, web root. So basically I can just do a wget, a curl. If I'm on a, a box that doesn't have a wget curl, I, I can use different methods like netcat to transfer my files over to this box. This box does have wget, so I was able to do wget, my IP address, download Lint uh, Enum and Linux, Linux Probe Checker. So if we kick off Lint Enum, We'll let this run for a moment. It's gonna spit out a lot of information about the system. If we scroll back up here to the top. All right, so we're at the very top here. So we know some information about the kernel. We know the host name. Um, users, there's the user root, there's the user 10. Uh, 
Interesting. So sudoers configuration condensed. So there is a sudoers file, and according to the sudoers file, Ted has all access to the awk command with no password. So he doesn't have to enter a password to run awk as root. So we can go through this some more, see if there's any other attack paths we want to look at. But let's try that one first. Now, knowing that that's there, the other thing we can look at doing too is that's uh, Python Linux Linux proof checker. So Python Linux proof checker is similar to Lin Enum, um, though it suggests vulnerabilities to try as well. And the one thing I do like here is the related shell escape sequence that it offers. So right here it's saying awk, awk begin system. So in theory, we know we can use sudoer, or sudo, to run awk as root. So this is telling me the command I can use. I come down here, paste. Now I know this is gonna fail. And it's not a big issue to fail. You can see here that we are still just at dollar sign. If I do ID, we're still Ted, right? But what if we modify that string? So let's exit out. Let's paste that in again. And let's try a different shell. Like sh. And you can see I'm uh, prompted with the uh, hash um, the hash sign. Um, and now if I do ID, you can see now I have root. So I can do cd slash root. Oop. Helps if I can type it right. LS, and you can see this flag that text. I'm actually, I'm gonna minimize this up so you guys can see that a little bit easier. And with flag that text, if I do cat flag that text, I am now able to read the flag. That is it for Topo. Uh, as I said, it was a very simple box. Um, the two things I really liked about the box is the fact they gave me the IP address. Um, a lot of the VulnerHub ones, you have to search your network for the IP. Not a big deal, but any time savings is great. Um, and I like the fact that it had the, the shell escape sequence um, escalation path. Um, as I said, you don't get to see that a lot in a lot of the other capture the flags. And um, I think it's something definitely worth checking out. Uh, I think I've seen two or three capture the flags I've been able to use that on. And maybe one or two half the box boxes um, I've, I've been able to see that on and use that. So it's been a pretty cool uh, trick. Uh, that's it for this video. Once again, if you like this content, uh, like my video, subscribe to my channel, share the videos. I'm trying to get to 1,000 subscribers, uh, 220 subscribers. So those who are subscribed, thank you very much. I'm sorry for the lack of content over the summer. And hopefully now that I've got through half the box and I'm going to be refocusing on OCP, I can start giving you guys some more content. Uh, so once again, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends. Thanks and have a good day.